Hello everyone. Today I'm going to tell you how you can utilize your own body heat to glow a white LED. So the light will not be very bright but sufficient enough to look around in the dark. So I'm going to use two of these kind of devices. These are called Peltier module and this will convert body heat into electricity and a couple of this is needed but even though the, this series connected Peltier module voltage is too low to drive a LED. So I am going to use another circuit called the blocking oscillator consists of consists of a ferrite core and two coil on top of that and this white LED. So the heart of this oscillator is a transistor called a germanium transistor. Nowadays not that many manufacturers make this kind of devices. These are almost obsolete but one big advantage of this uh, transistor uh, I mean germanium transistor is that it works at a very low voltage. Even 200 millivolt or 0.2 volt it works well. So I'm going to utilize this transistor, that coil and the Peltier module to glow and white LED. Long time back, a person named Sivik first did an experiment with a copper and bismuth metal junction like, the, like this. A magnetic needle was also placed inside. One of the junction was heated and other was uh, kept cold. He could see the deflection of the magnetic needle once there is such a temperature difference is created. This means there is a current flow in the circuit which creates the magnetic field which in turn deflects the magnetic needle. The voltage produced this way is very little. If multiple of such dissimilar metal junctions are connected in series like this, uh, it is possible to increase the voltage as well. Practical Peltier modules are made of metal semiconductor junction to enhance the Seebeck effect. Much like as shown here, metal N-type, metal P-type, metal N-type. One side of the junctions called the hot side and other called the cold side. Two thin ceramic plates are there on top and bottom side to create electrical insulation. Silicon sealant is used to protect from environmental degradations. The Peltier module which I am going to use are bought from Amazon. The part number is TEC1-12705. The manufacturer's data is given here. Hot site keeping at 25 degrees centigrade, maximum power is 43 watts. Temperature difference if maintained 66 degree, maximum current is 5.3 amp, maximum voltage 14.2 volt, and module resistance is 2.4 ohm. So some of this data will be needed to calculate how much voltage we can get uh, if a, some temperature difference is created. If maximum voltage of 14.2 volt is applied, the resulting current will be 5.3 ohm ampere. So the voltage drop across this internal resistance will be 12.7 volt. Seebeck voltage will be the difference between the supply voltage and the drop in the at the resistance, that is 1.5 volt. So we know the temperature difference, 66 degree. So the Seebeck coefficient will be 22.7 millivolt per degree centigrade. I tried to measure the Seebeck coefficient as well with the setup shown here. A 10 ohm resistor is used to heat an aluminum plate. And on top of the plate, 
a Peltier module is placed and on top a heat sink is also there to make the, the top side colder. Two thermocouples are used to measure the temperature of the hot and the cold side. Thermal paste is applied on all the contact to make sure of good, good thermal contacts. A voltmeter is connected across the Peltier module terminal to measure the voltage. The 10 ohm resistor used as a heater is connected to a 24 volt power supply. And as the base plate becomes hotter and hotter, the temperature difference it was clearly observed between the hot and cold surface. And we were observing increasing voltage across the Peltier module terminals. Uh, the measured data is shown here. My experimental measurement shows a higher CB coefficient of 37 millivolt per degree Kelvin. However, my practical setup is not as good as uh, to accurately determine the CB coefficient. I'll consider the calculated one to be more accurate. This slide shows the approximate thermal map of a human body. The inner body, the normal temperature is 37 degrees. I am planning to use the device to harvest, harvest the body heat on one of the arms. On the arm, the temperature is 30 to 32 degree centigrade. As the Peltier module creates voltage utilizing the temperature difference, the ambient temperature must be less than that. Other than summer days, in most countries, the ambient temperature is less than that. And especially during the night, even in summertime, the ambient temperature is much less than 30 degrees centigrade in most part of the world. I measure my own arm temperature. It shows 31 degrees centigrade and the ambient was 23 degrees centigrade when these measurements were done. The temperature difference is 8 degree. This can give us 176 millivolt per Peltier module. We are using two such modules so we can get 352 millivolt. Two Peltier modules are connected in series and are placed on a thin aluminum plate. Adequate amount of thermal paste was applied on all the contacting surfaces. Two heat sinks were placed on top of the Peltier module. Thermal paste is applied on all the contacting surfaces as shown. Though the arm surface temperature is uh, 31 degrees centigrade, once the whole Peltier setup is placed on an arm, heat is being absorbed by the aluminum plate and the Peltier modules. The temperature decreased to 29 degrees centigrade. So the temperature difference will, be, will become 6 degrees. After 5-10 minutes, the situation worsened further after heat is conducted to the heat sink, making the cold side to reach 25 degrees centigrade. The, dif the difference is gone down to 4 degrees centigrade only. However, walking or wandering around outside improves the sit temperature difference. Air flow resulting from walking or body movement reduces the cold side temperature down to the ambient level. And the temperature difference, 6 degrees centigrade, is maintained sustainably. Now that we know that the Peltier module can give us 100 to 100, 300 millivolt at the output, such a low voltage has almost no application at all. To glow a white LED, we need 2.5 volt at least. So how can we boost this low voltage? We can use oscillator and the inductor to boost this low voltage. As far as I know, there is no integrated circuit or IC available to boost such a low voltage. Silicon transistors cannot also operate at this low voltage. 
only germanium transistors operate at this low voltage level. I bought some from AliExpress. These are the marked number 3AX85C. The specifications are given below. I tried to determine the input base emitter characteristics of this uh, germanium transistor. You can see even at 100 millivolt, there is a base current. On top, we can compare with the silicon transistor. A silicon transistor needs at least 500 millivolt to cross this same kind of threshold. The gain of the transistor was measured and it is 135. Here it is shown how the oscillator and the voltage booster works. 150 to 300 millivolt is applied in this circuit and this voltage is obtained from the Peltier modules. A, it causes a little base current, little base current to flow through this transistor and this base current will cause in higher collector current as there is a gain uh, of 135 of this transistor. As these two coils are coupled, so increasing collector current also increases base current and this whole cycle begins until it reaches the peak, which is the limitation. And then the collector current starts decreasing and which also enhances the base current to go down until it reaches the zero level and then the whole cycle begins and as the change is very fast and this is an inductor we can get a higher voltage at this point and but this higher voltage is clipped by this white led uh, and uh, the clipped voltage is uh, around 2.65 volt uh, for the oscillator coil a 3.8 centimeter long ferrite core was used and there are two coils on one on top of the other. The primary is 100 uh, turns and the secondary 200 turns and this was tested with a 1.5 volt uh, cell and if you see that there is no glow of the LED just change the connection of the one of the coils then it will start uh, oscillation because uh, the phases of these two coils are very very important. The circuit is built on a small protoboard, the coil, the LED and the transistor and a velcro was also used to make it wearable. Uh, the oscillation was observed on an oscilloscope screen. The peak voltage was 2.65 volt uh, clipped by the LED cutting voltage. Core side temperature and the output of the Peltier module is connected to a voltmeter. power supply is used to uh, flow a current through the 10 ohm resistor to get sufficient heat on the bottom plate now we can see the hot and cold side temperature is 25 degrees slowly uh, there will be a temperature difference between these two now after measuring the CV coefficient uh, this is the setup I built to be attached on on my arm to generate the voltage utilizing the temperature difference and uh, this is the blocking oscillator circuit 
to boost the voltage sufficiently high enough to glow the white LED, the ferrite core. And this is the transistor. It is a germanium transistor. Now I am measuring the temperature of, of my arm and you can see that it is close to 31 degree, 30 to 31 degree centigrade. Now I am putting the module on top of my arm. These are series connected filter modules. And you can see the voltmeter, uh, the voltage is increasing. And when it crosses 120 millivolt or so, you can see the LED is glowing. Slowly the voltage is going up and the brightness of the light is also going up. As I remove the filter module, you can see the voltage is going down. Now it is a little dark side, dark environment is created around the white LED to see the light clearly and you can see the uh, brightness of the light. Now, Using Velcro, we can just uh, attach the whole thing, I mean the Pelter module, with my arm securely. And using this setup and walking outside, you can see in the dark, the light is seen nicely, but uh, with the naked eye, it is visible much better than the camera.